seconds. Hey everybody, this is Enhander. This is Varnell. Fearpaintball.net, and look what we got. It's an X7 Phenom. Of course, this one has a slight modification to it. You can see we got the brass casings in the, uh, the magazine. There's an X7 ump shroud and a Tipman G36 ump stock. And of course, EOTech. Can't leave that out. It's not going to come with a gun. Oh, there's a Lapco barrel. But these are all custom add ons that Varnell's put on it. Um, we're going to do a little maintenance video for you today, but first off, we're going to share our initial thoughts. Um, we shot this for the first time the other day and uh, it's pretty good. It's, it's a good shooter. Um, I like it. It shoots smooth. Uh, it's very accurate, especially with the Lapco barrel on it. Um, both of us would agree we don't like the trigger. Uh, as you can see, it's all metal and shiny. It's a decent trigger, but it just feels too stiff. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I, bright and shiny on a nice, pretty black marker. I, I don't know what Tittman was thinking there, but uh, eventually I'm going to pop it out and probably paint it flat black, something like that. Should take care of that. And we got the uh, finally got the air through capability, uh, air going through the grip. Um, one thing to note back here, right here, this top push pin, the stock is in all the way, and you pretty much have to bang that thing in with a hammer to get that push pin in. We don't know why, it's just extremely tight. Is it that way with this normal back cap? Uh, the normal back cap was pretty tight. I could get that push pin in and out all right with my hands. It took a lot of pressing. I don't know if it's just after I push take that push pin out a couple times, if it's going to break in. Maybe it's got a little overspray in there that's just making the push pin too tight or whatever. But don't know what it is, but we took it out just for the ease of us not having to bang it on the video or to fool with it while we're trying to tape. So that's why that push pin's missing. And uh, one other thing I'd like to mention, they do have a nice, crisp uh, selector switch. You're not going to mess up in the middle of the game and accidentally switch this over, you know. And the uh, e-grip actually comes on when you pull it off safety. Chapal goes down into mechanical mode, e-grip goes off, and then back down to safety. So we're going to go ahead and start taking this thing apart. Varnell is going to start taking it apart here, and I'm going to kind of commentate as he takes it apart. So hand the tool over to Varnell, and we'll get started here. All right. So probably the first thing you want to do is just take all the extra stuff off that uh, is just uh, for looks. So pop any uh, sights you may have on yours. Of course, your hopper, front shroud, barrel, magazine. Go ahead and just rip all that extra stuff off of there and get that set aside and out of the way. Again. Keep in mind guys, this is actually a very, very small marker. Um, I was surprised at the uh, at the size of this um, reminds me of the A5. Um, you know how the A5 is kind of built off of a uh, built off of the MP5. Um, this one is actually reminiscent of the Ump, uh, in my opinion. Um, very small marker, especially with the stock folded in. Or if you don't have a stock on it, it's a nice compact, tiny gun. Also, this is another thing to keep in mind, just kind of like the um, the X7 push pins come in two different sizes, short and long. Short ones always go on the top, long ones always go on the bottom. That's an easy way to remember that. Front shroud, just pull straight off. It'll be just like that with the stock magazine. Two push pins here and pull straight out. Move a little closer, because it's not picking up on the camera. Okay, and... Uh, stock two push pins just like the x7 a5 everything pull straight out the good thing about the phenom no spring at all as soon as the stock comes out nothing wow all right so nothing popping out no uh bars no springs anything like that so after you get the stock off and all your extra stuff the next thing you want to do is take this push pin out right here 
Now this can be bolt out back, correct? Yes. And actually, before you can get the bolt out of the back, this is the the bare minimum. Bit of, yeah, bare minimum you have to do is remove the grip frame. Again, nothing jumps out when you take this off. It's all safe and secure. You turn it over. Nothing. What you hear rattling is the trigger moving a little bit. So it's trigger frame side, and then you got this little valve pin right here, and you want to remove it, and it can be a little bit tricky, but it snaps right out. And as you see, there's an O-ring on it. You definitely want to keep that lubed up every time you take it apart. Make sure there's a little lube on these O-rings right here. And then once that comes out, the, um, the valve and stuff in the side is going to become loose. So the next thing you want to do after you get that out is flip it over. And you'll notice that once you take that little valve out, that everything is going to move this way a little bit, but it still can't come completely out because your cyclone air hose is in it still. So what you want to do is just different from all previous Titmans, this just plugs straight into the side. And again, there's another O-ring right here. You want to make sure that you uh, definitely lube that up when you take it apart. But unlike all the other cyclones and everything, there's no uh, screw on this one. This one just pops right out. And once you have this out, you could just drop it back and everything falls out of the gun. That's a quite a piece. It's all one piece there? All one piece, except for, of course, the spring. You just set your spring aside. You have a bolt that reminds me a lot of the mini bolt, TM7 bolt, TM15 bolt, very similar to all those. And this is actually the uh, spool valve right here. That's all one piece. All one piece, everything's here. Uh, you definitely want to keep this little piece right here uh, lubed up. Get a little lube right here. Um, that way, when you fire, two little rubber shims here, you want to make sure those go on. It's um, a smaller one followed by a larger one if you ever uh, drop these off. And the, actually this back one has a, um, a kind of a little lip and you want the smaller lip to go down and then the, uh, the fatter lip to be on top. And then the bigger one sits down on top of it. That way when this goes on it's plenty lubed up to uh, move every time you shoot. And if you look right here in the very back, you can see all of these holes right here. That's actually the uh, velocity adjuster right here, and you can access that on the outside of the gun. Yeah, we'll show you that when we get it put back together. So uh, that's pretty much all the lubing you have to do on this thing. So uh, really cool thing, no parts flying out at you. You don't have to deal with springs. You don't have to, well, other than the spring on the bolt, but it's easy. Yeah. There's no small parts. Now, Detent? Is there a detent in there? Detent is actually still inside the gun. The only way you're going to be able to get the detent out is if you split the shell. Okay. It's using the, uh, I don't know if you could see down in there, but it uses there the it traditional is. A5 and X7 detent. Yep. And it's stuck down in there. The only way to get it out is to split the shell. But uh, you break paint on the inside of the gun. From here, you can just ram a squeegee down in there, get everything out. There's never really necessarily a need to uh, split this shell down any more than that. Unless maybe you get a lot of breaks in your cyclone and turn it into a blender and you got all kinds of gunk in there. Maybe, but general maintenance, I don't see you needing to break it down any more than that. Awesome. So, uh, first thing you want to do to get it back together, take your spring, put it back onto there, drop it into the back. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's finally got it right. It's still going to bounce around a little bit. First thing you want to do is right here, of course, make sure you get a little lube on the, uh, the O-ring here. Make sure that's lubed up. Just plug it into the side right there. There's going to be a big hole and then a little slit. So once you get your cyclone hose plugged into it, you want to take your finger back here and push in a little bit. And that's going to move this spring into here. And now this isn't able to pop out anymore. With your finger holding this in, you want to spin it back over and then take your valve pin that you uh, put a little lube on these o-rings here and just push it back into this hole right there. A little bit of force on it. And there you go. 
that's all back together back in and as we mentioned earlier there's your velocity adjuster right there they actually have a nice little plus and a minus about time so uh, you don't have to guess which way to go anymore they put it right there on the on the gun for you and from here on out it's just a matter yep, of from here on out you just uh, I find it easier to put the front of the grip on first and just kind of uh, shimmy it in shimmy it in there 